Right guys, so today, welcome back to the channel. I would like to introduce you to a 2007 Saab 9.3 Aero. I have the keys today. I'm gonna go enjoy this 2.8 litre turbocharged Saab, which I'm very apprehensive about. I don't, I don't really know my Saabs if I'm honest, so it's absolutely news to me. How many times am I gonna do that though? It's down here. <laughs> it's a good start to the video. Nice and quiet boost gauge in front of us. Okay, before we do go and enjoy this, what is this handbrake up to? I don't understand it. The 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 the, the things and the buttons underneath, and it's like fits in with the center console as you put it down. Yes, I've I've driven a Saab 9 for it was years ago. Now you guys may remember the black one that I did. Weird arrangement right there. Manual gearbox though, let's go and do this. Okay, so firstly, a huge thank you to Mike for letting me take his new edition out for a little uh, drive today. Now Mike did actually own the previous Saab that's been on the channel, the black two litre turbocharged petrol engine automatic that I did for the channel. This is his new one though, six speed manual, 2.8 litre V6 turbo. What I, I would expect to be the VXR Vector engine, some sort of tuned down version of it. Running 275 brake from the factory with 400 foot pounds of torque in these. This one though, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, is a Hirsch edition. I think I said that right. Basically, it is what AMG is to Mercedes, Hirsch is to Saab. They are the performance division, I suppose, from the factory. So this has a couple of performance upgrades that you wouldn't find usually on any other Saab. So it's relatively rare for what it is, this car. These things would consist of the exhaust system, which has a very, very nice burble to it. Insert clip now. It has the aero pack styling on this as well. So it's got the bigger body kit. It's got, you know, a front splitter, stuff like that. Makes it look a little bit better. It has these bigger 18 inch wheels as well. It has the bigger 340 millimeter brakes on the front and it's a manual and it's in the state and it's turbocharged. So I want to know what that really means in Saab land because the Swedish are very funny. That's my best Swedish accent I could come up with. <laughs> but if you were an architect and you needed to get to your architect meetings in a bloody hurry, I think this is the Saab that would be for you. It has Quite a good bit of get up and go, you know, even at the national speed limit, you put your foot down. And it's got, it's got a good bit, of, uh, good bit of power behind it. These are actually factory lowered as well, which I can tell this feels a little bit stiffer than the last Saab that I've actually driven. Third gear, good bit of pull right round in the revs. Revving out to around, you know, 6,200 RPM on these. It's definitely got some get up and go considering what this is. It's not really supposed to be a performance car, I don't think. Ryan Little. <laughs> She looks quite good in the car park, doesn't it? There is a sense of Saab about it, don't get me wrong. But I do like the aero. The aero is one of my favorite parts. The bigger wheels as well. I've been told that they're about a thousand pound to get hold of, to put on your two liter turbo. You know, maybe you wanted to put one in two liter turbo. It does complement the car quite a lot. There's a huge difference in styling, I think, especially between this one and the black one, the two liter turbo that I did. And considering you could probably take this anywhere and still look pretty good, style points are there, I think, on this one. The back end looks better than the front though, I think, with the twin X exhaust and the sort of clear rear lights. I do really like the back of it. So guys, let's have a quick look around. The Saab 93 Aero 2.8 litre turbocharged rocket ship, sheep in wolf's clothing. Now, starting with the front of the car, you do have this Aero pack that goes all the way around the car. Yeah, it's lowered from standard as well. I think around 10 mil 
on this one, um, which means that this um, you know front splitter is quite low, but it does really complement the car. I think it looks so much more aggressive with this kit on it. Bigger 18 inch wheels as well, you know, wider tire, makes for a better driving experience, especially with that engine. It needs the bigger wheels and tire package on the front of it. Coming down the side, you have the bigger 340 millimeter discs on this one with a bit more of a aggressive aero pack down the side. Again, coming to the rear wheels as well, 18 inch. But I think I prefer the back to the front on these, if I'm honest. I think the back just looks a little bit better with it sort of swooping down. The twin exit as well makes it on this one, the Hirsch exhaust system. It looks really good. You know, exhaust system being um, pretty loud, you know, good tone outside the car and then pretty quiet inside. Exactly what you want from a standard exhaust system, but performance based. Coming up, you do have this Hirsch performance plaque sticker on the back of it sort of shows off what it is coming inside the car this has the nicer steering wheel on it as well the v6 steering wheel which i prefer a lot more this has as well a leather stitched sort of clock cluster on the dash which most of the others don't come with funny things to point out let's get, let's get this out of the way many people may not know this is where the key goes are you ready right in there that's where the actual keys go a lot of people don't know that about Saabs, it's not actually in this bit here, which I keep on doing every time I get in this car. It's actually down here, sort of like a fighter jet, because that's what Saab were all about, fighter jets at the time. I think that's why the handbrake is like this as well, can only imagine, it's one of those things. Other things to point out though, you have, do have the sat nav screen in this. Now the air vents on this car are quite unique in a way. Let me show you, because this is the sort of directional position you can put them in and it's squares or rectangles going actually down into the air vent to channel the air where you fancy it to go which is a pretty cool feature it's, it's something that I'd never really noticed until I jumped in this one also if you don't know about cup holders and Saabs your mind is about to be blown that is your cup holder there is a cup holder down here as well which comes over and you can slide down which is a pretty cool little feature, but that is one of the coolest cup holders in existence. And yes, my, my bag says Jamie FYD on it. Shout out Nike ID. <laughs> but all in all, inside this car, I think it's a very comfortable place to be. The manual gearbox is pretty good. The throw is quite long on these, but I do prefer it over the automatic version that I'd already driven. A bit more driver focused, I think, in this one. The clutch itself as well, quite soft. You can get used to it every day. And as you can see, there is a child seat in the back of this. So it's a great family car. You could B road bash it if you really, really wanted to. Its main purpose is to be comfortable, have the power, some good looks, I think. There also is a enthusiast group called Totally Saab, which is basically a forum that you can chat to other Saab owners, get you know parts if you need to. So there's a big sort of aftermarket enthusiastic forum for these cars, which I didn't know about, if I'm honest. I thought that you know a lot of people would just buy these cars and there wasn't too much enthusiastically owned Saab owners, but there is. There's still a massive sort of following for these cars. So you can still get as many parts, as much knowledge from other users as you would on any other forum. Something I have to show you in the back of this car though, keeping in with the randomness that is the cup holders, there's actually cup holders in the center there. It's a pretty cool feature. It's something um, that a lot of automakers should really think about using uh, this seat for you know storage or even cup holders. Such a good idea. A lot of uh, ATVs driving around today. There's about four in, a, in concession there. I don't quite know where they're going. I want to do an ATV review. If anybody has got a Raptor or whatever, I want to do one. Probably because I fall off it, I think it'd be quite funny. But I would actually like to do one in the summer, I think. It'd be quite a good laugh. Now I must admit, when you do grab first gear, there's not too much turbo involved. I can't really hear a lot of turbo happening but when you crack that second gear let's slow down for second gear shall we round I'd say three and a half grand lovely surge of torque coming right around in the rev and then into third gear 
there seems to be a big surge. Obviously where this is a bigger engine than the original two litre that I did in these cars, I can feel a huge difference. The turbo from the two litre spools a lot quicker, I think. And you know, you pick up pace a little bit better, but it tails off very quickly. Whereas this, sort of the opposite end of the spectrum, it will, you know, come on a little bit later in the rev, I think, but the torque and actually pushing you down the road, there's a considerable amount more coming from this car. Third gear surge. Yeah. This on the motorway I think would be very, very good. B roads, yeah, you're gonna be waiting for a bit more turbo. You want to rev it out a little bit more. But I think on the motorway, you know, upwards of 60, 70 mile an hour, I think this thing bloody sail. And I'm currently stuck behind a Hoover lorry. <sighs> At least it's comfortable, isn't it? <laughs> Even if you were an aspiring architect and you haven't quite got there yet, value for money is there in these. These are, you know, relatively rare versions of themselves, don't get me wrong. You can pick them up though. I think there's one on Auto Trader for about like four, four and a half thousand pounds. So if you're willing to pay that sort of money for one of these, there's your opportunity. But if you did want the two litre turbo, they're in the 1500 to 2000 pound mark very, very easily. Now these still being front wheel drive as well, means you do have a slight bit of play from the front end, but it does come on boost. quite fast though for what it is you, you feel very disorientated though because you're in a comfy position in the car it's a it's a comfy nice place to be I mean you do put your foot down second gear that's the torque face right there Woo. yeah she goes she goes well okay so overall thoughts on this Hirsch Hirsch I'm saying that right when I Hirsch Leave me a comment below if you know the answer, because I don't. But what are my thoughts on it after driving around for a couple of hours, you know, enjoying this car for its intended purpose, I suppose. I don't think this was really supposed to be a performance car, but it's been in the hands of the Hirsch Performance division at Saab. So you've got to look at it as a performance car in some sort of way. Lowered ride height doesn't mean it's a little bit stiffer, but it's still comfortable, which is a good thing. Still very poised, you know, considering it's still an estate. Front wheel drive means you get a little bit of skittishness from the front wheels, but it's relatively planted for what it is. Boost really only comes in in second, third, fourth, you know, all the way up. So it'd make a fantastic motorway cruiser, I think. The huge positives are that the price on these is very cheap for what you get. You know, that fantastic engine, you know, with all this comfort sat nav, you know, that's quite old, don't get me wrong, but it's still there. You've got everything you could ever want, really. It still does look aggressive. And I think if you're looking for something a little bit different that maybe no one else has got, that's, you know, an estate, you can still get kids in the back, you know, there's a car seat right there. So this is the family runaround as well. MPG wise, what are you going to be expecting? You know, Mike's getting around 27, 28, you know, on a good run, you know, around town, not really hurting it too much. When you are hurting it though, you're looking at 16, 17 MPG. It's a turboed V6, you're gonna expect it. But great value for money in this one, and if you're in the market for an estate that's a little bit different and still got the comfort levels, but a bit of power behind it, take a look at one of these, go and drive one, and see what you think. But anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, check out fydapower.com. Caps and hoodies are there. Please support the channel. I really, really do appreciate every single bit of support that I get from you guys. If you haven't already, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all on the next video. Cheers, guys. <laughs>